Hi, everybody. My name is Kirill Yudintsev. I'm the creative director at Gaijin. And right now, I'd like to tell you a little about the latest update, 1.77 Advancing Storm. We had a lot of feedback about the latest update. Thanks for waiting to us. Your feedback is very important and useful. Among other things, a lot of the feedback was about the new engine, the new renderer, the new graphics, and the changes to the game's performance. Performance has improved for some players and become worse for others. Some of the players who experienced the worst performance were using super sampling, SSAA, Supersampling is the most resource-intensive form of anti-aliasing. We do not recommend enabling it unless your video card is very powerful and you get at least 200 FPS without it. For everyone else, there are options that are simpler in terms of performance and can provide results that are just as good. HQTAA, JustTAA, or even HQFXAA. These are perfectly decent types of anti-aliasing that provide very nice image quality. The new engine has given the game a lot of new capabilities, but we've still got some things to work on, and there's definitely room to improve optimization. These new capabilities require a lot of configuration, and we need to take a lot of nuances into account. The update just came out, and at some point over the next six months, we're going to improve various aspects of the game's appearance, as well as its performance. So if your performance has gotten worse, it's possible that we'll be able to find a way to improve prove it in the future. A large number of players have been asking us about the Navy, how the pre-CBT of War Thunder Navy has been going, what its eventual fate will be, and what our future plans are. Testing is going well, we've done a lot, and we don't have all that much left in our to-do list in general. We're approaching getting into closed beta testing. The Naval has changed profoundly over the last two years. It has traveled a long road from what it was at the beginning of CBT and what it has become now. And all that's happened exclusively thanks to our players, their feedback and their opinions. We've been listening to them, we watched them play, and we tested and played with them. Our goal is to make everything fun and engaging, and we don't want naval play to disappoint our players. We want it to satisfy their expectations. As far as we've concerned, we achieved almost everything we could, everything we wanted and everything our players wanted. In other words, we're at the end of this initial stage. Our players often ask us what our future plans are for aircraft. They want to know why we keep coming out with all sorts of things, including modern vehicles for tank commanders, but when it comes to aircraft, there's nothing like that. The first thing I should point out is that before we introduced ground vehicles, we dedicated about four years exclusively to developing the aviation. Another four years have passed since we introduced ground vehicles, and during that time we've never stopped developing both parts of the game in parallel. It's just that the majority of the most important things we could have implemented for aircraft have already been implemented. We've been adding some rather significant things every year. For example, uh, we introduced gunner cockpits relatively recently, and we've made it possible for planes to be destroyed by mid-air collisions with falling bombs in the same update. In general, we've been introducing all sorts of things, but they're mostly smaller things because all the big stuff has already been done. The next major step we can take when it comes to aircraft will probably be noticed by everyone. I'm talking about switching to more modern supersonic planes and introducing guided missiles and other modern aviation technology. As I said earlier, we've been conducting and continuing to conduct internal testing, and the results aren't exactly unambiguous. Vehicles on this level make things complicated thanks to missiles, detection systems, and supersonic speeds.
All of our players who fly planes know that jets are already rather different from piston engine aircraft in terms of gameplay. And there are plenty of people who don't like this difference. Future changes will alter the game even more, so we're working, we're testing. And right now I'm not ready to say that more modern aircraft will definitely appear in the game. But there's still a good chance that more modern planes of some kind will be introduced. I cannot give you any details, we're still in the research and the experimentation phase, with the goal of determining the upper limit. There's also the issue that there are fewer and fewer different production models of vehicles, so balancing various nations becomes problematic. There are a lot of nuances and questions, and that is an extremely complex task in terms of gameplay, balance and how to explain it all to our players. As you know, we don't invent new vehicles or change the stats of existing ones. So if balance was an issue in real life, that's also going to be a problem with the vehicles in the game. In general, there's a lot of work, and most of our players won't necessarily be pleased with the results. That being said, in our game, you don't need to play with every vehicle. There's something you don't like, don't play with it. So we're still working on this for those players who will like it. But I cannot tell you any more about certain plans right now. In addition, we're also experimenting with helicopters, both attack helicopters and others. And here, things are looking much more positive and unambiguous. This kind of gameplay will generally be simpler and more understandable for players. Although helicopters are harder to fly than planes, they're also slower and have less firepower. Shorter firing distances and the pilot's influence in terms of piloting and shooting is greater. So it's entirely possible that helicopters will appear in our game before modern planes do. They also fit better with ground vehicles in terms of destroying each other. Everybody loves killing tankers, right? Update 1.77 Advancing Storm added new top-level ground vehicles to the game, such as the Abrams, the T-64B and others. And needless to say, this has affected the balance and changed the game at high ranks and battle ratings. In general, right now, five days after the release, we're satisfied with how they've been received by players and how they impacted the game's balance. But introducing top-level vehicles is bound to change the balance of all previous vehicles and will always change the game. In other words, it's a whole new adventure. Therefore, we're going to have to take another look at all those battle ratings affected by this change. So our work here has just begun. Write to us and tell us what you think. Leave feedback in the forums or on the comments, because your feedback is as important as statistics. They're the two primary part of the information we work with. However, while statistics show us dry facts, it doesn't do a great job of telling us how changes have been received by players or how they're affected the way the game feels to them. In order to get this information, we need to watch our players play. We need you to leave your feedback so we can read it. So write to us. We always study your feedback carefully. There will definitely be changes to both things that are already in the game and things that are yet to come. It always happens. But Right now, right now, players have been pretty positive about everything. I hope you liked Update 1.77 Advancing Storm. We spent over six months working on it, almost a year in fact. And we've put a lot of effort into it. Send us your feedback, write comments, like us and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.